a few years ago, I came across a quote that I found very helpful as a, like a mind training technique, really. Just three simple words. Uh, learn. Don't judge. In other words, um, be curious, not judgmental. Sometimes that quote is attributed to Walt Whitman, but um, WikiQuote says it's, it's not found in any of his books. But it's a good one, isn't it? Um, be curious, not judgmental. Um, so this is a mind training, and, and this is something that I aspire to do. Having grown up in a very judgmental environment, it's, it's a, a habit that I have worked with over the years to try to uh, overcome. We can certainly judge or discriminate between right and wrong. There's, that's one use of the word judge. There are many uses of the word judge, actually. Um, but often when we judge, we're evaluating the merit or the worth of something. And that's where we can start going down the slippery slope, isn't it? So judgment has this sense of a pronouncement of truth. You know, it masquerades as wisdom, as evidence, as something that's certain when actually oftentimes it's not. It's just our opinion. Um, and if you think about it, when you have judgments in your mind about a person or a situation or something that's going on, just notice the feeling tone that's there. It has a kind of heaviness to it, doesn't it? I find that to be true. Whereas curiosity, on the other hand, is very different. It, it's very lighthearted. There's a sense of awe, of openness. Um, wonderment, like Venerable Jump had mentioned yesterday. Um, there's a sense of, of uh, interest. You know, you have real interest in what is going on, what leads to a certain conclusion, or why a person is doing a certain thing. It also includes uh, asking probing questions. When you're curious about something, you're going to want to know more. So curiosity is eager to learn something new, and it's willing to be wrong. That's an interesting part of curiosity. It's willing to be wrong. It's learning something new often um, shifts us from something that we thought we knew to something, another position. Um, so we might find ourselves saying, wow, I have a really different point of view about that. Tell me more. I'd like to understand you know, how you came to that. Or um, I'd like to understand the reasoning behind why you said X, Y, and Z. That's very different than why did you say X, Y, and Z. <laughs> There's not real curiosity there. So it, our genuine curiosity is what will invite connection with other people. Um, so do you think you could hold curiosity and judgment in your mind at the same time? Very difficult, huh? Um, judgment is kind of like a monologue, isn't it? One line sentences. It's this way. Where curiosity is more like a dialogue. It's interested in, in knowing more, and having more discussion. Um, curiosity tends to build relationships. Um, judgment tends to end them <laughs> or at least limit them in a way. So here at the Abbey, we do many daily tasks, many daily chores like washing dishes, vacuuming, setting up for teachings, uh, setting up for posada. 101 things, right? Splitting wood, everything that we do here. Um, there are different ways of doing those things. Two people can do the same activity, but they'll do them very differently. And we'll have logical reasons about why we do them the way we do them. The end result is often the same. You know, we get the task done. <clears throat> so, for instance, um, if you think about how you like to wash dishes, and then you think about how some of the other people on your team like to wash dishes, there are different ways of approaching it, aren't there? Uh, some people like lots of soap bubbles, so they're pouring in lots of soap. Some people don't like soap bubbles because then it gets in the rinsing water. Okay, so you might prefer your way of doing it. You might be curious why the other person put so much soap in the water. You might like to wear gloves to protect your hands. Maybe the other person likes to not wear gloves so that they can actually feel if they get the dishes clean. <laughs> Um, maybe you like to organize all the dishes before you do them and get them all uh, rinsed off. Maybe you're the person who likes to have someone else do that for you and so that you can just wash very efficiently. Again, in this kind of scenario, two people are washing dishes. We get the same results, hopefully, clean dishes. But if we look, we'll find that there is, we might find that we justify why we do the things that we do. Because don't we think that we're doing it the right way, or the better way, or uh, the preferred way, the more efficient way? Whereas, and, and if we think that way, chances are good we ha can have a judgment about how someone else is doing uh, their dishes. 
often we're doing this with big and small things throughout the day, um, insignificant things, very monumental things we're, we're judging. Um, but the interesting thing is when we can begin to be curious about our judgments, uh, to really notice that the outcome of the judgment, it, it tends to stop a conversation. It doesn't uh, invite the conversation. It, does, it tends to stop connection. It doesn't invite connection. So if we think about it, children are naturally curious, aren't they? They go about looking into, getting into all sorts of trouble. But then if you think about how our education system is set up, uh, and culturally or socially, how, how children are socialized, you know, by the time they're six or seven, they start losing some of that curiosity. And then if you think about the education system, often children are rewarded for right answers, you know, so that tends to lead to judgments. I got a 95 on my test, you got a 94, therefore I'm better than you. That leads to that kind of judgment, that rewarding uh, can lead to judgment. Over curiosity, or over empathy for that matter, or compassion. Um, it's easy to agree with people that we have a lot in common with, we share common values with. It's much harder to be curious about uh, what's going on in the minds of people who have very different ideas. So um, the, the key, I think, is the sincerity to hear another person's point of view. Um, we can pretend to be interested. We've all been on the receiving end of that, maybe on the giving end of that, too. But when there's a sincere interest to know more, to learn more, a person can feel that, can't they? There's a kind of vulnerability and honesty about that, authenticity. Um, Venerable mentioned recently that His Holiness has a real curiosity about science, and he's interested. He asks a lot of questions of scientists when he meets them. Um, she also mentioned the other day in Jeff, after Jeffrey's class that things like mind training, things that get us to question, are a good prelude to thinking about emptiness because we're questioning our point of view, understanding that the mind doesn't necessarily have the truth on things. Like this morning when I was just sure that I had only done <laughs> seven mantras and actually I had done nine. Um, a lapse of mindfulness for sure. Also Venerable Jampa quoted this um, person from the UN who was involved in the Paris Climate Treaty um, that she was encouraging people to, when they're having dialogue with climate deniers, to really question them and, and with genuine interest ask them what kind of future can you imagine with the trajectory that we're on now, and really listening to understand what is their point of view, what is their uh, understanding, what is their what are their assumptions? So much depends on our perspective. You know how we look at a situation, a problem, or even a solution will inform the kind of outcomes that we get. Um, so, for example, somebody, some people might have judgment about a sixty-year-old. Buddhist nun, a renunciate, who decides to put on braces at the age of 62. They might, be, they might have a judgment about that. Or they might have curiosity, like, what the heck is that all about? You know, tell me more. Um, so there's a wanting to understand uh, another person, as opposed to wanting to be right about our own opinions. That demonstrates a kind of vulnerability. You know, tell me more. That, that puts ourselves in a vulnerable position. We have to be confident to do that. Also, with curiosity, there's an openness to exploring what it might li be like to be in another person's position. So I really appreciate it when Venerable Children asked us to think about what would it be like to grow up in Donald Trump's world, like with his family, with his education and background, all the uh, stresses that people would have put on his, him as an individual. You know, you could really step into, try to step into his shoes to see what that would be like and how, what kind of outcomes that might produce. So when we do this, we also model this for other people, that it's good to be curious. And it doesn't matter if we get it right when we're asking those questions. The most important thing is to open the dialogue and then to learn more. So we're modeling for ourselves and for others that it's OK to have a different point of view. What a concept in this day and age and in our current political environment. So just as we can train to become more compassionate people, we can also train to be more curious people. Um, I have found it's a lot more fun to be curious than to um, pretend to be right. <laughs> it's a lot more fun. Um, so the next time that you feel some judgment arising in your mind, instead of you know, 
either physically or mentally crossing your arms and hardening your position or doing all that facial stuff that you do when you have a judgment. Um, instead, we could try to remember to be curious, to invite curiosity in our own way of looking at something and try to learn something more. Again, it has to be genuine curiosity, not just using this, the right words. <laughs> Although curiosity may have killed the cat, but there's some question about that, where that actually came from and what it meant. I think, it's, I think we can generally agree that it's good for humans to be curious. <laughs>